Now that we've pretty much created all the objects that we can create inside Civil 3D, we're gonna start talking about plan production inside Civil 3D. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create some view frames to create sheets based on our alignment inside of this drawing. In order to create sheets, the first thing you have to do is you have to create view frames. So in order to create view frames, you have to navigate to the output tab of the, of the ribbon bar and get to the create view frames button. Select the create view frames button and the create view frames alignment window pops up. So inside of here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select the alignment that you wanna create view frames based off of. So we're gonna go ahead and select dev align. And we're gonna leave the station range as automatic. We're gonna hit next. From here, we're gonna select what kind of sheets we're gonna create. You have the options of creating plan and profile where you have the profile stacked above or below the plans. You have plan only where you can have just plan sheets or you can have profile only. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a plan only sheet set. Uh, I'm gonna use the templates that are provided inside of Civil 3D. If you have sheet sets that are already created for you where you work or if you wanna create one, you can model yours after the plan sets that are inside of Civil 3D. But for us, right now, we're gonna go ahead and use a 20 scale Arc D plan because we have our annotation scale set to 20. We're gonna set our sheet set size to 20. So I'm gonna go ahead and select 20 and select OK. From here, you have the option of how you want your view frames to be placed on the alignment, whether you want them to run along the alignment so that the alignment generally runs through the middle of the drawing, or you can have it rotate north so that north is up on your drawings. For our purposes here, I'm gonna have it do a long alignment. And then you have the option for setting the first view frame before the start of alignment by a buffer zone. So if you check this option and you set a buffer zone, Civil 3D will take the first view frame and set the beginning of that view frame at least a certain distance before the edge of that view frame. I'm not gonna check this option and I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. So now what we have the options for is what is the name of our view frame group? So I am going to, again, call this dev align and then have it as view frame group. Actually, that's probably overkill because we, right now what we have is VFG dash view frame group alignment name. So the alignment name for the view frame group, as you can see here is dev align. So we're gonna go ahead and back out on this dev align and just leave it as VFG view frame group alignment name next counter. Again, we have the option of to put a description in what the layer that the view frames are gonna be put in on and then what the name of the view frames are gonna be. So VF next counter. This one we could put dev align and then have view frame so that we know that these view frames are associated with our dev align view frame or our dev align alignment. Uh, from here, we have our style of what the view frames are gonna be. These are very basic and generic. So probably one is okay and just run with that one basic one because in display, what you're gonna see is the view frame border. You have one option and you have a layer and a color and line styles and line scales. And then when you drop down for your view direction, you only have plan available. So you probably don't need to have more than one view frame style. So you can go ahead and click apply and okay. The only time you maybe need more than one style is if you wanted to specify the difference between if it's a plan only, plan and profile, or profile only. So maybe you might wanna have three styles. From here, you have the label style. There is a label that's gonna go in the upper left-hand corner. Well, based on this label style, it's gonna go in the upper left-hand corner, but it is going to just basically label, as you can see, you probably can't see right here, but if I zoom in real close on the corner, the name of the view frame goes up on the upper left corner. So I am just going to leave it as that, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And now we have the option for match lines. And so what match lines are is they are basically denoting the location of where one sheet matches with the next sheet. And so we're gonna go through these options. You can choose to create view frames without match lines, but 
I find it easier to just add the match lines as we're creating the view frames. So I'm going to go ahead and check insert match lines. I'm going to have it snap to station values down to the nearest one. You can add additional distance for repositioning, which will increase your overlap. So it'll decrease your viewport window, uh, not necessarily your viewport window, but how much information is shown in one viewport window. And you'll end up having more overlap between your sheets. And sometimes that's desirable. For me, I'm going to leave it as unchecked. Uh, for your match line, you can set your layer. Uh, I'm going to leave it as CNO match. Then you have your match line name. So I'm going to call this one dev match line. And then we will specify a style for your match line. And if I go to edit my basic match line, what you're going to see here is that you have options for plan and then your lines and your match line mask and then what your mask pattern is. Uh, so I'm not going to modify what these ones have. I'm going to just click OK and leave it as basic. And then you have your label styles for the left and right hand side of the match line. And so what that does is there is certain labels that are placed to the left of the line and certain labels that are placed to the right of the line based on which view frame you're in. And so if you go and you look at these and you edit the left ones, what you're going to see is you have the match line text. And on the left hand side, it is telling us that it is going to return us information on the match line number, the station, and the previous sheet number. And so then if I go to the right hand side and I edit it and I go and I look at this, it's going to say it's the match line number, the match line station value, and the next sheet number. So this is basically placing labels so that when you look into your view frame, you're going to see on one side referring back to the previous page and on the previous page, you're going to see it referring to the next page. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. I'm not going to change these. I'm going to leave them as is for now. And I'm going to create my view frames. And so when I select create view frames, what you'll notice happen is there are two blue borders that are dropped into my drawing and they are labeled. And if I go to my alignment around where there is the crossing of the two view frames, you're going to see this white dashed line here. That's my match line. And then my match line has the labels associated with it. Match line one at station five plus 58, previous sheet number. And we haven't set up the sheet numbers yet, so we're not getting a number set up. And then match line one at station 558, next sheet number, and having a sheet number there. So now that we've set up our view frames, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and set up our sheets.